Hi everybody, it's Robert Dunt from ArtTop10.com and I'm here today at this wonderful Picasso exhibition at Tate Modern, Picasso 1932, Love, Fame and Tragedy. And I'm here with the uh, curator, Juliet Ritzi. Hello, Juliet. <laughs> hi, hi. So, um, do you want to just give us a little thing about what's the premise of this show? What's it all about? Um, so, sure. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so, we uh, decided to focus on uh, one year of uh, Picasso's um, work and production, uh, really to sort of like have um, a better sense and to give the chance to the public to really closely look at his work. And, uh, you know, we, we, we will hope that actually people will be embarking like in a journey really uh, through the month of January until the end of the year. Uh, I must say, we also wanted to sort of include um, a couple of paintings from uh, the end of 1931 and we're actually standing just in front of one <laughs> uh, of them um, to give a sense of what was the uh, status of play at the time for Picasso who uh, definitely was and um, involved in uh, in the in the best circles of artists he was um, very well known his status was very a high status I would say uh, but also his personal life how would that play you know play out in the painting so relationship with uh, his wife Olga Koklova uh, they had a son, uh, Paolo uh, was 11 years old at the time, uh, but also the appearance of uh, uh, Marie-Thérèse Walter, who was, um, well, uh, uh, who was yeah. in a, a relationship with him uh, at that time. No, it's wonderful. I, I think focusing on that single year um, actually gives a real nice sense to it. It allows you to really focus on what was happening with him at the time. And I think it's quite nice. It allows you to break through some of those myths and see a bit more of the actual man himself. When you were putting the exhibition together, few, was there something about Picasso you didn't realize or think about? Did you come to know him in a different way than before? Well, absolutely. What was um, incredible and like very interesting is uh, one thing that comes to my mind is really looking at the archival material, for example, that we did uh, research for a long time. And uh, there, you know, it appears that he had really, um, well, he cared about his family very, very much uh, as a human being, as a, as a husband, as a father. Uh, and at the same time, he was very torn with this other relationship that he was having with Marie-Thérèse Walter. What's very also funny is that you think that um, um, even though she is the main subject throughout the show and you'll see that more and more you know when you walk along uh, there is a sense of like through the archival material we uh, we are not sure how many times she actually was there to be the model for his paintings uh, so it goes really from this kind of like ideal and sort of like dreamlike idea of, of uh, a, you know relationship with Marie Therese more than actually thinking that she was there to sort of like pose um, as a model for him and I think you know this came across by doing researches, over researches, you know, there are some images, archival material, um, you know, picturing her in different settings, like on holiday, etc. But we don't really know, in fact, how many, you know, times they saw each other. It was probably relatively uh, low the number of times they saw each other. So um, that was also definitely a, an interesting aspect uh, to, you know, that actually came out, you know, from the researches we did. That's really interesting, actually. Uh, when you, it's both interesting that you say you really cared about the family because there's a lot of that sort of sense of him being a cruel artist with all the cubism breaking the shapes down. Um, it's also interesting you say that it was almost like he was dreaming of Mary Therese because there's so many pictures of, what, of Mary Therese sleeping or dreaming. There's that sense of dream throughout the thing, isn't there? It's fascinating. Um, moving on to the next thing, I'm, I'm, Art Top 10 is a sort of practitioner-led <laughs> YouTube channel. Um, so I'm a painter myself, an artist of predominantly what people would call abstract paintings, although I wouldn't say I'm abstract, but I'm obsessed by colour. I think Picasso is actually a stunning colourist with a real sort of simplicity of colour he uses. Did the colour in the paintings speak to you when you were putting it together? Absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, if I would start, you know, with the end of it, when we installed the show, uh, it was literally astonishing to see some of the colors in those paintings, because if you think about when they were made, so we're talking about 86 years ago, and how some of them are still so bright and so, like, present, and you can't just avoid thinking, oh, my God, you know, like, yeah. this is quite fascinating, really. Um, and also, I think that it's important to say that he was... Uh, also, um, well, there are two things I would say. One is uh, about his um, relationship with surrealism, which is quite 
present the show. Uh, so the idea of like, you know, block colors, for example, if we look at um, some of the paintings here, so you can really see that he's uh, definitely playing with that language, yeah. even though he's using his own uh, sort of interpretation to it. So he's never been affiliated with surrealism. He was definitely close to them. He was definitely someone who actually was, you know, knew about them, obviously, uh, but definitely was not a surrealist per se. And also one other thing that I would say is that even though color was definitely, and it is dominant in the show, there are moments where um, he also did uh, some like, yeah, white on black. And that's um, a very important uh, element, I think, to the show because it was like really um, using this kind of canvases as a moment of reflection and pause to sort of like, you know, move forward again. If you think about uh, the black and white Guernica, for example, 1937, that was really a moment of reflection and, 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 and pause, and then, you know, he's done that amazing, incredible uh, work. And the way we try to just like put them together in just one room to give a sense of uh, how important they are as well, because he did paint them, you know, throughout 32 and even a bit earlier, uh, but definitely in 32 is starting really to sort of like erase, uh, rethink about the figure again and again and again and again. So you can see that through the succession of the, the paintings he does, as well as like the uh, sort of line and erasures of the black and white uh, paintings. Things. That's really interesting. Actually, I love the way you, you sort of almost say the black and white is that reflective period. The colour almost sums up his emotions at the time. That's fascinating. And um, this press view is flocked with people today. <laughs> They're everywhere. So um, would you say, you know, the cult of celebrity that sort of we talk about a lot today and that was obviously surrounding Picasso even at the time, what, what do you think it is that still makes him so fascinating to people today? Well, I do think it's um, there are a few, there are a number of things. Definitely, one thing that you know, st struck me when we worked on this show is like how much um, art historical references Picasso has, and that I think it's very relevant also to a young generation who are studying history of art and are interested in the topic. And he definitely plays and and places himself, you know, within the canon, which is something that you can see also throughout the show. Uh, but also, I think it's just like his energy and his vitality and the way I mean he you know is able to just move from one style to the other and from one subject to the other if you look at the end of the show we have some crucifixion series at the same time we've got uh, flute players he just like basically works on both together so you've got color you've got black and white so there's this really this sense of like vitality and energy that is still extremely relevant today I think yeah. no I think, uh, I think you're absolutely right it's fascinating but it was lovely thank you very much to Chort, chat brother and, uh, and I hope the show goes really well. It's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bomb buckler.